Hello, hello, Amarachi. How are you? Gosh, I'm doing so well, Nikki. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here oh <laughs> in God, my I'm, home with you. <laughs> I am so excited about this opportunity. Um, one, we get a chance to actually get to know each other while being um, listened to by others. <laughs> so this is our, our first like personal acquaintance. Um, I'm a fan from the distance. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I'm just excited to learn more about you and all that um, you stand for, all the things that you have your hands in and doing it while looking fly and having a little grace, a little slither of grace off all that. A little, in there, right? a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I want to welcome you. I'm going to introduce you in just a moment. Let me just welcome all of our listeners. Hello to each of you in your respected places. I'm hoping that you are doing absolutely phenomenal. You are tuned in to Conversations in the Nick of Time. I am your host, Nikki Roach. And those of you who are new to the platform, here we talk about leadership excellence and leadership accidents. And we do that through a number of ways by inviting experts and different individuals who have expertise in all types of industries. And today I'm excited because this is an industry and um, a person and a character, if I could even label it that, a being of beauty that I've not had a chance to, to interview before. So this is going to be great for me. And there are so many layers to our guests today. But I also want to thank um, our sponsors and supporters who hold this platform down every week, Sparkman Pathway to Careers, KSTL 690, and Covenant Exchange LLC. I want to go ahead and get right into it with the um, intro of our guest, Amarachi. Ah, oh, um, oh, <laughs> Maduka. I had to say the other. <laughs> it's all tongue twisted. No, I love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> So a little bit about who our guest is. She is the third of four children born to Nigerian immigrants. Early in life, Amarachi, she already had a passion for entertainment. And although music was her lifelong dream, completing education remained a top priority for her. Completing a bachelor degree in journalism from Wayne State and a minor in film studies. We find her here in this space and we're not even at all surprised of the greatness that she brings to the space. Amarachi hit the ground running after moving to Los Angeles with two suitcases in the fall of 2013. And within two years, Amarachi secured an anchor position of her own morning show, Ma Magic Mornings, an international rendition of the show, Michael and Kelly. The show aired 17 episodes on the African-based TV network, Silver Bird Television. Marachi also secured several national TV spots, including a cameo in Fox daytime hit talk show, The Real. She's currently the spokesmodel for the weekly aired infomercial Instant Figure, a shapewear lingerie campaign. She made a cameo in the critically acclaimed film Straight Outta Compton and landed a contested role in GSN's hit show, Mind of a Man. I could go on and on and on. Um, she has a podcast, Chit Chats, where she talks about unique perspectives of life blessings and BS. Love that. Um, she currently works as co-host of the television radio program, Rhythm Late Nation program, which airs also on Silver Bird TV on Mondays through Fridays, an African version of Dish Nation. And for those who are newer to Amarachi, you may have seen this beautiful face and all that body yaddy yaddy <laughs> on what, as she was selected as one of seven, one of seven for the Shade Room's Thick House, which is a new plus size fashion reality show and seven ladies compete to impress the panel of veteran fashion industry judges. And she is still on that. She's still live, y'all. <laughs> oh my gosh, Nikki, you did your research. Jeez, I'm like, what? How did she know all this? I know, because you said you sent me like six words, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, know, we, it, it gets to a point where it's all so juggled together because we do so much and we wear yeah. so many hats. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to put it all in one umbrella. Host model, 
journalist. That's it. You know? <laughs> no, I, I, trust but, me, I get it. I love it. But you, I want, I wanted to make sure we painted a picture. Thank yes. Thank you. For people to know you didn't just come out of nowhere. And yes. then two, you forgot receipts. Yes. Ma'am. Yes. Receipts. Oh you my God. Yes. <laughs> Wow, Nikki, you brought another perspective. Next time, I'm definitely going to be like, okay, so look, here it is. <laughs> Let me share. But yes, um, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Uh, you know, as a mother and a mompreneur and a person that is just on the move, it's um, refreshing to hear the work that you've been putting in. Yeah, yeah. And let's hop right in there since you brought it up. Many people will think that their opportunity has passed or um, it's too late or I've got too much life that's happening um, and it doesn't allow them to really lean into new opportunities. Yeah. And you are a mom. You have all of that we just talked about and some that we didn't, um, that we may oh, tap into I, a little later. Yeah. How are you juggling all of this? You know, uh, with prayer, <laughs> prayer and um, just kind of staying focused on, you know, the goals and the dreams that have always been inside, you know, like, I know I have to do this. I want to do this. Um, I have gotten to the place where I don't want to mentally be stopped by any attract distraction, you know, because in life, we only have one life to live and we want to do it right. And so many of us get caught up in, oh, I don't have enough money. Oh, I don't have enough time. Oh, I have a family now. Oh, I have this. Oh, I can't do that. Okay. So, but the people that are doing it, do they have two heads? Are they, I mean, what, how are they doing it? So, you know, it's, um, it's really like a journey, but trying to stay motivated. And then my kids, I'm like, I got to do it for them. I got to do something for them. And, you know, I'm a wife and trying to make sure that, so. Nikki, <laughs> look, prayer, <laughs> it works. <laughs> Listen, prayer does work. Yes. Now, when you talk about making sure that, you know, you have these dreams and you want to make sure that you don't miss out on making these dreams come true. I'm kind of paraphrasing. What, yeah. what are the dreams or what? Give us one. Well, one. <laughs> well, OK, well, let me talk about plus size modeling. That wasn't a dream. <laughs> my ultimate dream and goal is to have a talk show, kind of like the Wendy Williams show. You know what I mean? I, I oh, love her. I've always I can see her. that. I love Wendy, you know, and so we daily, we chug at that, you know, and that's a dream that I've had since I was little, but it hasn't happened yet. So I got to keep going. But with the modeling thing, I, I, um, it's actually more of an affirmation for myself and for other women like me, like, after having a child, two kids, actually, in two years, you know, my body and the changes and trying to get back to that goal weight and that goal body, oh, it's over for that. I'm like, uh, so some way you have to like dig in and embrace that. Like, okay, what can I do with this? Because, and how can I make this work for me? And thank God have it. The modeling realm would let me right in. I'm in there now. I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh my Wendy, God. I'm coming. No. <laughs> yeah. And it's so interesting because you, so you find yourself doing all of this other media <laughs> exactly. work and then you stumble, which I think everything happens for reason. Me too. And as long as we're prepared. Yes, exactly. Obviously you and were prepared. prepared with a portfolio and, um, some, a friend of mine that I used to work with and my sister referred me, Oh, do you want to model? I've been hearing that for a while though, but I took the risk and I'm like, yeah, I'll join your agency. Yeah. I'll get a portfolio going. Yeah. Yeah. Calls. I'm like, what? Look at God. Like I've been putting the podcast out for months. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just, so, um, but you were prepared. prepared. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's the point. Yes. Being prepared, being ready to go. If I didn't have that portfolio, if I didn't take that risk and spend that initial money just on some, well, yeah, why not take some photos that would go towards modeling? I wouldn't have been able to get that position, you know, so being prepared. Yes. That's the most important. Yes. Being ready to go. <laughs> so now you find yourself in this and we're going to get to thick house because um, I did get a chance to watch the episodes. Oh, yeah. beginning to end <laughs> you see how they did me trying to send me home the first day I'm like what I just started following y'all get me out like that 
<laughs> but but here oh. is here you are one out of seven. One out Talk of about seven. pressure. Pressure. Yes. What pressure? What was the whole experience. Tell us a little bit about the experience of even getting the call. Oh, okay. So that was and 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 see that was even something that was coincidental and random. So I saw the casting. This one wasn't through my agent. I saw the casting. I kind of thought, oh, yeah, okay, I'll send a couple pictures. It, they asked for a video and pictures. So I just sent some words. Oh, yeah, I've modeled it. I sent a couple pictures, whatever. So um, I didn't hear anything. So I didn't think anything of it. You know, they're like, they're looking for a couple people. And I mean, some models, plus size models. So then I got an email back. Hey, can you send a video? Like a week later, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so hey i'm no, like, not thinking you're like nothing not think this whole time i'm just playing around like okay. i didn't just kind mm -hmm. of doing it with the, my passion of camera love okay. but i wasn't really fully in modeling yet i just started modeling in january nikki so 21 21 so i was just kind of you know so i sent the video hey i'm a plus size model journalist host da, da, da. you know i did all the other stuff and in my bed and praying about opportunities. And I looked at my email and like, congratulations. We'd love to have you a part of our show. <laughs> I'm like, what? You and seven girls, what? So it was amazing. And it, like, it was amazing how it just came on me. And then they're like, oh, shoot, who's gonna be then? And you know how all the planning goes into that. Getting to the house and seeing the other girls, then it's like, oh, these are real models. So, <laughs> Cause these, these we're all real models, but they have been modeling, you know? So they have all the tips and tricks and I'm like, oh, okay. Right. Because well, your first challenge put, put you to the test, which was walk with a dog. Walk with, and, and walking with a dog, I'll just learn how to walk. And, then, and, sl and slay. And slay. And I'm like, you're like, oh, your picture looks home girl. I'm like, oh, okay. I, I didn't even know what that meant, but okay. Yeah. It's so the first challenge. And then um, getting in the bottom on that first week, I'm like, this yeah, the, is yeah, the very. I even, I'm like, wait a minute, I'm I'm watching this because of her. <laughs> look, look, I already, I look PR, any publicity. Look, even <laughs> if I left that day, thank you. I had a great time on the show, but um, I was so easy in my heart. I'm like, oh Lord, this can't be the end of my beginning. <laughs> and like, it just you know, gave me that big opportunity and sent me home and. Yeah. At the end of the day, the judges were gracious and, you know, chose me to stay that day. So the next day, episode two, the next week, you know, I had the bald head. Okay. So for those who have not seen the show, you can go on to TSR. So the Shade Room TV. Yeah. If you go to Facebook or either YouTube, you can find the full, no commercials, no nothing, just a full episodes. I know episode one and two are up and three will be this Sunday. Three will be the okay, big house. Yes, it'll be every Sunday, um, same time, 4 p.m. Like she said, like you said, yeah. Facebook Watch, IGTV, Shade Room. Um, and so, yeah, so you on the second episode, the it's called Switch My Wig is yeah. the episode. And you, all six, the, fine, the, the re remaining six have to find, well, no, you get assigned. You don't even get to choose hair yes, style. Yeah. And, and your hairstyle is what? My hairstyle was a bald head. Oh my gosh, Nikki. I'm like, oh, so y'all trying to set me up for real. Like, I, I just knew that I was going home that day. I'm like, see, you see how they do me. They tried to send me home last night. Now tonight I'm going home there. They gave me no hair because I wanted the blue or the blonde. Cause I'm like, oh, I'm definitely gonna slay the blonde hair. Okay, you know, I do that. But you, yeah. let me tell you though, Amarachi, you, oh. you came through. Oh, thank you. You came, and it was almost as if you, like, I too, honestly, I was like, oh, they sure trying to boot her out. <laughs> yeah. But I'm telling you, you, you let them put you together. You put on that green yeah. satin suit. Yeah, yes. Yeah, not that, that face, that you came through though. Well, thank you so much. And I, I'm hoping that you realize that's I think it saved you and I it seemed like you found confidence like even more oh really I think yeah it probably did save me <laughs> like you're right because I was I was up like I'm going home <laughs> I'm like oh yeah. well how come they didn't give it to her you know what I mean but no but it's, and like, it's such a beautiful shot yeah thank you so yeah I really pulled like 
really was like, let me try. I was trying all types of things. Obviously the camera doesn't show that in the 18 minutes of the show, you know, it doesn't show, but I was really like trying all types of things. If they showed you like I was on the chair, I was up, I was down, I was swinging, bending, I was doing everything. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I have to get a shot. And like you said, the other ladies have been doing this for a minute. You just started in January. Yes. And so they know, so they already know how to do their angles and you know, what looks I'm like, okay, I don't have any hair and y'all got me out here. <laughs> so I was, yeah, but uh, yeah, thank you. Pull through and I'm like, yes, thank God. I got another night. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited about this week. That's good. Now, what has been a challenge for you regarding the, the new exposure that this opportunity has provided? You know, um, I have, it, it's been a challenge, um, at, well, practically scheduling, you know, cause I have children, I have a family. So let me just be practical for the people that are, you know, it is a lot of challenging, you know, on the schedule, but, um, the criticism of being my age, I'm the oldest one on the show. I'm 32 years old, which is not um, old. I, I know it's not, but in the modeling realm, yeah, you know, they have this cap of like oh she's not 25 she doesn't look 25 you know and it's like but I'm like I'm stepping out no I, I look good I don't care I got two kids I'm out here I'm, I'm in here so that's kind of been the challenge just making sure I have that confidence because you know I get a lot of feedback too from family and associates and friends old friends non-friends you don't know in there oh why are you doing that uh, you're not a model stop that you know you're too old for that you know just and I'm like well I have to keep going. So I have to every day challenge myself. Okay, today, what picture, what photo shoot, what can you book, what can you do, you know, to continue to pursue this path? Now, what would you say outside of prayer is keeping you going um, when it comes to this space of it? Because that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I know. Picky, I know. <laughs> I need to be on where you at on the other <laughs> side. I don't even know. <laughs> Look, um, well, I mean, I have a good support system. So, you know, that helps, you know, um, having people close to you that understand you and are like rooting for you, that that's actually been helping because if I didn't have that, I might've been like, oh, I'm not gonna do that. You know, cause you were like, oh, you gonna post that? Oh, you gonna do, oh, I don't know. Post, you know, <laughs> like. Yeah, and, and now you're out there. Uh, so yeah. you can, it's no turning back. No. Nikki, help. <laughs> How, okay, so that's to, to me that is such a vulnerable space. Yeah, it is. Um, I know, I know. I, I applaud you. Thank you. I know it is. It. I'm the and and you know what? I will say I learned so much from the girls working with them. Some of the other staff that modeled, you know, before and the people that came and coached us a little bit during the show season. Um, yeah, they, they were just like, no, you can't care. This is your career. This is your thing. And you're not doing anything wrong. There are big busted women just like you that need bras, you know, and that need to see, oh, okay, yeah, that would be nice on me. You know, I think I like that and show different sides. If I was a very skinny person, it wouldn't look as um, salacious that's, or it wouldn't look as like sexual. Let me say that. that okay. Salacious is not the word. Because if you're little or you know if you're the size it's like oh, okay she's just modeling for limited to you know but when you have a little bit going on it's like oh hold on what is she doing <laughs> like that is not right <laughs> so yeah. but but I love the fact that this is you know one topic that is very near and dear to me is diversity inclusion equity and belonging yeah. and I I love I embrace the show because it totally comes out the box just slaying all of these stereotypes yeah. and um and pulls you in because it's like look at all this beauty and they're just as, you all are just as sweet and kind and um although except for a couple she kind of shady but that's okay no look they getting shady on that like, oh y'all I heard oh. I, I know and then even Takara <laughs> says next week yeah gonna turn up right yeah exactly. <laughs> it's like woo um so yeah. what what have you what kind of lessons have you learned that you can apply to all the other things that you're doing? All the other things you're doing? Um, you know, that's a good question, Nikki. Um, consistency. 
I wasn't a consistent poster or consistent content. Like I just do it when I want. I consistently do it. But, you know, as far as taking an extra step of, hey, I have to plan something. I have to do something or, you know, I have to make sure I'm active. I've learned that with this because you have to consistently be putting yourself out there. Okay. Um, now, are you doing that yourself? With the modeling? No, I have an agency. Okay. But that's on the back end, you know, that's, but you have to work for that because you have to keep your portfolio updated. But for my Instagram and my social media presence, you know, you can't just be not <laughs> be absent, you know. And even on those platforms, are you actually posting all of that? Not all the time. Okay. <laughs> and I'm only asking because, you know, those who are listening, yeah. when I tell you, like, you have all, the, some of us think, okay, because you can't just have one thing you're feeding anymore. You yes. have to have multiple things exactly, and, and then still also practicing some self-care, which we'll get to in a little bit. Yes. Um, so you have all of that. And there comes a time where you have to relinquish some things and trust people. Yeah. Yep. What have you had to relinquish and Ooh, trust? Oh, that's, that's a good one. You know, I, I, this is okay. So to be honest, so my nanny, she has been helping me with my social media a little bit. Okay. I do direct her. But you way. also have a nanny. Yes. Do I do have help? Yes. I mean, come on, you need a village. These kids, you need more than one. <laughs> like you need, I have two little boys. They are so wild and full of energy. Like yeah. I can't, I can't keep up. Look, I'm too old for that. <laughs> I'm like, sit down, get out, no, stop, put it out. So I do have a little help, you know, to help me and, and so I can work because to me, this is work. All of this is work. You know, people might think it's all cute. Oh, she, oh, oh you're looking cute. Oh, no, it's actually work. So with that, I had to relinquish the social media, you know, being on there. I don't really scroll that much. You know, I leave it to somebody else. Um, I don't think I've had to, uh, I had to relinquish some relationships because <laughs> mm. okay. like, they not the, you, the energy isn't right. It's not on the up and up. Like you got to be trying to get ahead and focus on going up with the people around you. And if it's anything other than that, you got to cut it off. That's to all the listeners too. Like your space and the people around you matter, you know, and in your inner space and the mo where you're supposed to be the most creative and the most, um, confident the people and the energy around you needs to be that yeah. so in order to thrive i mean we can go the other way too but you want to thrive so, <laughs> you know what i mean it's, all, and it's gonna be either or right yeah it's gonna be either or so so it's up to you which choice you want to make you know as a person but yeah that's that's pretty much what i've had to give up okay now time. I, yeah, yeah time now how, how are you disciplined with time I'm a little bit of a procrastinator, a little bit, a little bit, but, but only because I'm a mom. I just blame it on that. I'm like, I'm gonna use that excuse till the cows come home, really, because you have to put time into them too, you know? So if it's like, hey, I need you to send an email or I need you to put this together or send me some pics, I might do it tomorrow. But if I wasn't being a procrastinator, I could have just sent it right then because they're right in my phone. It's not like I have to go print them at FedEx, you know what I mean? Like, okay. So that, that brings me to the next, another question then. How are you, how do you stay ready? Because you're doing stuff that can happen at, at any moment. How do you, what is staying ready for? So staying ready for me. So honestly, let me pull out a few things that, okay. I order, I keep wigs on deck, like oh. hundreds and hundreds of pieces, not hundreds and hundreds, but Lots, all you see these all in the box. <laughs> look, they look. I got all box. Look, this all with so, <laughs> That's one way you have to. Cause the thing with the hair thing is, I'm very versatile with my look. Okay. I have to have hair on hand, or I'll just go crazy. So I stay ready with that. I'll keep wigs. I order. I don't. They all boxes all over the place, but not the expensive ones. We have to be mindful of our spending. Yeah. We pick up the cheap ones and make them look good. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so to me, and I, I'll just give this little beauty tip out. If you go to the beauty salon and you spend one hundred dollars on your hair that month, you could have had four different hairstyles because you could have got four twenty-five dollar, maybe thirty dollar wigs and wore them each week. So that week, I would have been this person. The next week, I'm that person, and so. 
you just keep the look going. You keep it fresh. <laughs> so that's a real thing. But but again, I you answered the question. You yeah. didn't answer it. Like yeah. that's that's a way of staying ready. Yeah. And Excuse me one second. I'm sorry. No, oh, yeah, you're fine. One second. This is this is reality. So she's taking a break to go and take care of the babies. <laughs> And while she's taking care of the babies, we understand that this is also a part of the reality in regards to when we have life that's happening all around us. Oh my gosh, right. Blooper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, life is happening all around us and it doesn't stop. It doesn't exactly. stop. It doesn't stop. And you see they're going wild out there. I'm like, Wendy, <laughs> <laughs> they're supposed to be with you. <laughs> but um okay so that was one way you stay ready (laughs) what's another way you stay ready um i do uh meditation walks um i mean spiritually physically mentally I, i mean there's different ways to stay ready but like i said the physical the hair keep the hair and the clothes on but um you know, walking, prayer, taking time to yourself. That's that's how I stay. Because sometimes I get in these days where I don't feel like doing anything, but I got to do, I have to do something, Okay. you know, and you have to do it. It's like, no, I don't want to do it, you know? And and it's okay to feel that way some days. We have to let people know that too, that you're not always going to be up, up at a hundred with yourself, you know, but you still have to be productive. So, um, yeah, that's that's important. But was that about staying ready? Yeah, that's yeah. about being ready. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, because you've you've now incorporated, you know, mind, body, soul. Yeah. Um, it has to all be in in, in a cohesive <laughs> state yeah. in order to be productive. I'll say that. You know. Okay. What would you have done different now that you know? And I'm going to say just for this year, just okay. this year, what would you have done different this year, 2021? Okay, so we're five months in, right? Almost six months. Almost. Um, what do I would have done different? Well, let me give me, well, n- this year, nothing. Previous years, few things, like been more serious, more dedicated, more, um, when I was uh, pregnant with my first baby, I kind of took a hiatus. I don't know, I just, I didn't do a lot of action. Like I didn't work, I just kind of didn't even post. And I would have done that different. Like I would have used that as a journey and, oh, having a baby now, you know, I kind of took a back seat. And so um, had another baby and I kind of got more active, but I think I would have done that different. And that was in the last three years, you know? Okay. So and- but this year, no, I'm on my grind. Last year I was doing videos in my lobby, you know, during COVID, um, did it, started my podcast chit chats guys go ahead and listen to that (laughs) Rachi Nation chit chats and um so just just being like internally motivated okay so I think it's manifesting you know and with the prayer included (laughs) (laughs) well I'll tell you man this I've been like doing all types of work I'm always working but to me it's not work because I like to be creative you know I also do music too I mean I'm just playing around with it but I'm going out to Atlanta this weekend got new music coming out shooting videos like I'm yeah yeah Yeah, and I and I I love that you brought up you know the fact that yes you're working but it's not work um because it's your it's your call I mean I mean you just you shining so bright and just radiant talking about it all however I know one thing even for myself that I've learned and I told people I'm like it may seem like a lot of different things or you're showing up in a lot of places but when it's all in alignment it's all the same work yes it's just you're showing up on these different platforms exactly like like, oh you're doing this and that oh you why don't you just focus up look it's all being creative that's why I just call myself a creative Anything you need me to do, you need me to rap, you need me to sing, you need me to model, dance, I'm here. What, what, what do you need? You know, like a jack of many trades, but still a professional in my own right. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's not work. You know, it's, yeah. it's really your passion, your calling. Like what, you're, like what we're talking about right now, like I can tell this is your thing. Like out, you're getting stuff out of me and that's good because I'm usually on the other side. Like, I, I know. I, I laughed because I said, 
this is going to be so interesting because you know, know we are we are the worst at the things we do right exactly. <laughs> we can't do it. but no this is great now um with the show you know what's one thing that um and then we'll we'll move to another um there's a couple other things i know you have coming down the pipe that i want to make sure we touch on okay yeah but as we wrap up your our focus on the the show thick house um as you be, continue to, to go through your journey like w- w- even if it were to stop let's say even this sunday we don't want that not at all yeah i don't want so, that well, yeah. what would you take with you just at the at this moment, what would you have um, learned? At this moment, um, I would take with me um, confidence and inner beauty. Um, confidence and inner beauty more. Uh, that's really what this this is about. You know, you look at the comments and you're just like, whoa. Um, but I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> you're going to keep seeing me on all these plus size platforms and I'm not going to be ashamed of my body or my stretch marks or the way that I, that I have on me. Like mm-hmm. this is really like solidified. At first I was a little skeptical. I was like, oh, no, Molly, ah. now I'm like, oh yeah, I'm here. So I think that, that that's something that's, um, that I'll take with me. Okay. Mm-hmm. You, you cringed and you made a little noise when you said comments unpack yeah. that a little bit for me I know. the comments on the show some of them are pretty mean i mean okay. look, people are gonna be mean and so it's like so you took all your time to type that like you couldn't just scroll on and be like oh no you know so some of them but that's what people go to go through and to be in that space for people to even make those comments is a blessing like good i'm glad you can see me and see what i'm doing even though you know, it's like, whoa, <laughs> but yeah, they've been pretty critical. I'll say that. I mean, okay. but it's plus size women and we, you know, we're all different sizes and might not be the spec of some people. And so they're not going to understand it in a way of, oh, glorifying black women in America growing and showing off confidence for other people like ourselves they're not going to look at it like that <laughs> they can look at it like oh look at these fat obese girls like yeah, that's so mean. <laughs> but that's the beauty of the show you know we're reimagining um and this has been for years but i think now i mean we're stomping it out in regards to reimagining what beauty is and, and not just shape but I mean, I love when I see the commercials with those with um, who have different abilities and I'm yes. um, still showing up and rocking it out, you know, in their respective places. And um, so I applaud you. And there's a quote by Oprah. I think it's Oprah. And she says that if you can't handle being talked about, then you're not ready for success. Right. Wow. That's a great quote. It That's is. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard but it is, um, right. If you have thicker skin, you know? Yeah. And and then it, it, and also when they're talking about you, they don't know you personally. So you can put that, you can compartmentalize that too. Like, okay, well, you don't even know me. So, you know, that's another way like to look past that, but yeah, that's true. If they're not, you can't, if you can't get that, then you don't need to be successful because they are going to be talking. (laughs) If yeah. what true, not true, lie, rumor, they don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and some people, I mean, they dedicate their lives, mm-hmm. which is quite interesting to me. Um, you're gonna dedicate your life and your time to finding out the dirt and the tea on everybody else. <laughs> <I right? know. laughs> well, okay, so wait, take, rewind because I like Wendy. Look, <laughs> she does that, but I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> I know. But I'm, but I'm, but but she also has other things. I'm talking about people who are just intentionally you know out yeah. for for to be mean just exactly. right yeah. yeah yeah just trolling that's trolling yes that's the word <laughs> that's the word so you have i know a few other things that are coming up yes uh, i do have a couple things coming up um well i do have a brush coming up um, <laughs> so there look because okay so this is sweaty faces stop here i'm a brush um and you guys thank you for listening just follow me and you'll see um as the brush come out okay but um yes it's pretty much to keep you fresh and dry like some of us have really oily skin or um perspire more people like me 
Um, and you can't always blot your face with tissue. You know, I work in front of the camera and many facets and I'm always trying to get sweat or getting wet on my neck. Uh -uh. So I got to keep it classy and cute. And I just hit a little dab dab and it just, it's been working with me. I've been using it for the last seven years and all of my work and people are starting to be notice me, noticing me for that. Mm -hmm. They think I'm applying makeup, but really I'm keeping dry. Because <laughs> if I didn't do so it, what, I'd be shining. <laughs> so how did that idea even pop up? Thick house. Thick house. Yep. Okay, wait, okay. pump the brakes though. Pump the brakes. How, how did it come from Thick House though? Well, I've been doing... I've been using the brush since I've been working in television, right? But on Thick House, I took it to production as well, just as my regular thing. I usually keep it here or here. And one of the models was like, why do you always have that? Like, you need to trademark that or do something with that, like even on the show. So at first they were making me put it away. And then later on, they're like, oh, where's Amarachi's brush? Your brush, your brush, your brush. This is, I just said that. Oh, go get her brush. Yeah. <laughs> so if you watch, if you watch closely, the brush is all over. Like, so I'm like, you know what? You're right. Sunshine, sunshine, the model. She's like, I don't want to get one of those. I need that. She even used it for herself. Like, girl, I'm hot. We outside. So, so wait a minute. So that's why it's coming but, soon. So I, so, you know, but remember your, huh? but remember your word earlier, which was what? Preparation. Preparation. Yes. Yep. Exactly. So you were prepared for <laughs> what it is. So now you're ready to come out with a line of brushes. Yes, I am. Yeah. By by going to be one of seven in a reality show that you just started doing that work of space, <laughs> what, four months ago, five months ago. Like, look at how this is. Yeah, it's oh just my gosh. It's, it's that's what I'm saying. It's it's being prepared and it's divine grace. Like you gotta be working constantly. You can't, it doesn't matter. You have to be productive. Once you be productive, you put that out there, things are gonna be coming to you, you know, and falling in your lap and blessings are gonna be falling on you because you're prepared, ready yeah. to go. You know what I mean? Oh, send me a tape. Oh, I don't have one. Well, okay, so how, how are we gonna cast you then? Or, you know, send me some pictures. Oh, I gotta go take some. How are we gonna cast you then? No, I have that ready to go just in case you decide wow. you need it i'm all about that i got to get the other p out of their procrastination but the preparedness oh i got that <laughs> that is just amazing and then so by you taking this brush someone mentioned something and now we're about to launch in production yeah exactly i'm like you know what that's true because i'm not the only one that needs it and people work in front of the camera like you can't be you can't blot all the time you can't be putting makeup on ah, because you, you know? don't need, and sometimes you can't see yourself so yeah, you see. don't want to exactly do that. and then when you have heavy makeup you know how that gets you don't want to wipe it here unwipe it there yeah this is just a quick dab dab the sweat is consumed right in there <laughs> keep it moving keep it right on you it's pretty and then the brushes i have they some of them have rhinestones and little sorority crystals you know just little cute stuff so it doesn't look you know ghetto okay so <laughs> were you prepared to be a business did you know the business side of all of this you know what that's a good question no i am a mompreneur like we do have a family business that we do so i've always you know i'm nigerian so we're always calculating <laughs> Look, we always doing something. Look, this is cool. I do this too, but you know, um, so I do, you know, I kind of just was like, okay, well that can be something we can add. You know, let me see how that goes with um, the brushes. Cause I'm always going to use the brush forever. So I might as well share it with others, you know? And I love that because a lot of times we think that it has to be something like you know, the best thing, like we have to reinvent sliced bread, like a whole yeah. other formula. But yeah. there's, as they said, there's nothing new really under the sun. It's just a matter of, it's the person behind it. It's the personality behind whatever is being launched. Because I, I mean, we could easily say, okay, I'm a Rachi, a brush. Yeah. You know how many brushes there are out here? Yeah, exactly. What made you push through, like past that? That's true. Um, just the fact that I know that there are people, like you said, that maybe, oh, I like Amarachi, you know, and I like what she's about. And um, 
I like that concept. <laughs> I'm going to get one of those brushes, you know, because that's what made me for sure. Because like you said, there's brushes, there's brushes at the dollar store. I know. <laughs> but I'm stamping a brush because I use it for a specific purpose. Those brushes are for makeup. Mine is not for makeup. Mine is for sweaty faces. Stop here. That's it. So I don't want any application of powder and foundation on my brushes. Mine is strictly for staying fly and staying dry. <laughs> so, and, and that's the difference, you know? It. I love it. Yeah. Now, as we sh shift our attention to your media platforms, um, you have podcasts, you've got TV, radio, you have um, um, your host, your anchoring, your your BET red carpet hosting. Just you know, in a snapshot, how has that added value to your brand? Yes. Okay. So, you know, with COVID, a lot of that has slowed down um, with the carpet and obviously the show with COVID and the contracts, but that is actually, that's given me the confidence in front of the camera. Like that, that's honed my camera skills. Like um, that was another thing I think I was, I, that, I, that wasn't my first rodeo. Like I, I know the camera, you know? And so, oh, this is my first time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, girl, put the camera on, like, you know, so like, but, um, so that's helped with that. And then chasing people down for interviews, you know how this goes, yeah. trying to get them to, oh, you know, you get, no, I don't want to talk to you. And who are you? And, you yeah. know, all those, I've been through all that, you know, doing carpets, doing, uh, you know, events and lives and reels and, you know, just everything that comes with the, journalism, podcasting space. So that's why I kind of started the podcast so I can stay fresh on that. During COVID, I was still recording, doing a show, like um, a self-produced show, but the podcast came at a good opportunity out of a studio here. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'll transition to that. And we you do that as a vlog as well, you know, um, camera and, um, and radio at the same time. So I think it just keeps me ready with ideas and keeps me fresh. We have to research the show and, you know, make sure we come with the facts and, you know, whatever we want to talk about that day, that's work, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. But I love how you mentioned also that while yes, you are like camera ready, this is not your first rodeo. <laughs> However, you took the initiative during downtime of the world. Yeah. <laughs> To stay sharp and stay fresh. I commend you for that because a lot of times we can get comfortable. Right. And we think right. we can ride it out. Right. And I had said that. I specifically said that. And I even said that to my husband. I specifically said that. I said, no, because I still want to be consistent because after this, after COVID or, you know, people are going to be like, okay, so what have you been doing though? Nothing. Like you haven't been doing lives. You haven't been doing anything. You just been, you know, when it's time for work that was a way to keep working in your own space and keep being creative. I'm all about that. Like being productive, like we were talking about being prepared. I'm always doing something. Even if it doesn't seem like I'm doing nothing, I'm doing something. <laughs> like I have to get my goals. I have to reach them. <laughs> That's just it. Like, I love it. I yeah. love it. And, and mm -hmm. that determination is yeah. coming. It's oozing through. And I think we can all learn a little bit from that. Yeah. Now, even with the um, media platforms that you find yourself um, weaving in and out of, mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite space? Okay, so my favorite two spaces are Instagram and Twitter. I play with Facebook, but that's more family. And, you mm -hmm. know, people will still remember me as the little girl from Michigan. And I'm like, look, I'm a whole celebrity. No, 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 no. <laughs> but yeah, grab it and grab it and claim it right yeah, look exactly so y'all better start calling me by my name but look um, <laughs> no, instagram and twitter um are like my favorite spaces um and on twitter i'm amarachi nf not host amarachi that's actually a fan page somebody made just in case somebody finds me on twitter okay host amarachi is not mine <laughs> but, okay but yeah okay. those are my two favorite spaces Okay. And Instagram is so sight and go, or you can post video, you know, it, it's easier, you know, and I think it's more exposure, even though people may not act like they interact, you know, you look at the insights and they're really interacting, you know, or looking. Or, so I think um, Instagram and Twitter. Okay. And TikTok is, is coming up too. I'm on there too, but I think I'm a little too old for making all those videos every day. I can't do that. That's too much I'm work. Not, I don't yeah. have enough time. 
I, I, I only see what people send and they're like, check this out. And you see the yeah. little, like, I'm like, eh, that's okay. I'm <laughs> it's so much. You have to be consumed and kept. It's like, please give me a break. I can't be on all this social media. When am oh, I going to be? <laughs> and that's why I asked because I asked the question earlier, like, or, you know, what have you spun off for others to kind of keep you still oh, relevant yeah. and aware, but also um, where what spaces are your, your favorites? Because if you're at actually doing work, yeah, you cannot get sucked into this social media, no. like all of it. I'm trying to tell people, I'm like, I can't be there. Oh, you ain't, oh, you didn't like my, oh, you didn't. I haven't even been on social media for two days for real. Like, you know, cause they think it's you cause you're posting, but it, yeah. So it's like, oh, I didn't see it. Oh, you didn't see my post. No, <laughs> like I, you know, I'm actually working, working. Like I can't scroll for two hours, and that can take a lot of your time. That's where a lot of people lose time. People don't even know you lose time on social media. Yeah. Now, and now Clubhouse. Are you on Clubhouse? I am on Clubhouse, but I, I am too. Right yeah. But I think I'm on there maybe thirty minutes max a month. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm not on there a lot, but yeah, maybe a conversation here and there. If I see something I like, but you know, that's easier because that's more listening. Yeah. Whereas Instagram is more visual and takes your time. But what I do is I limit like, so in the morning after I do my, you know, personal time or um, you know, devotion, I might hop on there. I'm like, okay, I'm giving myself 45 minutes. If you won't get in that 45 minutes, like a like or a comment, it's over for today. You know what I mean? Or until that night when my kids go to sleep, I hop back on there, you know, go through, oh, look at hot girl. Oh, cute. Oh, love it. See you. Check all the stories you can. If you didn't make it in that 45 minutes, no, I didn't see it. <laughs> I love it, but it's a discipline. It's yeah. A discipline. Yeah. I can't spend my day on Instagram. Yeah. Like, and people really do spend their time on social media. Yeah lose a lot of time a lot of product productivity time so you know okay yeah now what can we see on the horizon i know we talked about the brushes and brushes. You, to, you gave us a little sneak peek about possible music yes um, okay i do have some yeah i got music dropping this year <laughs> well, this summer um and i do have a couple other shows um um in the works that i'm trying to figure out hammer out okay <laughs> yeah so you can just you know if follow me if you love me and like me like I love you follow me <laughs> keep up <laughs> and um yeah that'll be a great way to keep up but yeah I do have a lot of stuff going on and yeah I just want to share with the women and I want to be about women empowerment and you know following and chasing your goals and dreams man I'm all about that I need to get more about those quotes because I really feel like that in my heart so many times we're just held back by society but you got to just do it you got to go you can't wait what do you think holds us up criticism what other people think of you how other people view you fear um you know lack of confidence insecurities all types of stuff you know how it is and then you know sometimes you know relationships that we're in and just keep us in a in a swad swaddled headspace where you can't even think you know so you got all that going on so you're not living to your highest potential. You know, some of the most talented people aren't even where they're supposed to be because, you know, of those distractions. Yeah. I don't even consider myself the most talented at all, but I'm about to be working until I look like it. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I already know I'll be looking up why I'm not, but I, I love can't. this energy. And then I also learned, because I know a lot of times we will compare, especially as women. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. women of color, especially. Yeah. I can, I can, because I, I am that. So I understand that dynamic. Been there, done that. And not understanding there's room for all of us and what it is that you do and how you do it, even though we may be doing the same thing on the same platform, I can never deliver the way you do. And I'm not supposed to and vice versa. But right. yet at the same time, I'm like, man, do you know how much we could do and, and how much success as we define it, we could have if we were to partner and realize like, this is what you do. This is what I do. How do we get together and collaborate and make something bigger and better. I know it's so sad, but I hope that we start to like, and well, you know, I think it kind of is getting better, but I, I hope that we start to blend more together and yeah. Hey sis. Yeah, sis. I see you sis. Let me help you sis. You help me. We can do this. Let's collab on this. Right. So much. Oh no. She doing how she get that. How she doing that. So, 
that is so counterproductive. <laughs> like, you, like we what? all we all win, and again, yeah. there's enough for all of us. And um, there is. yeah, so we just have to keep pushing and, and keep yeah. moving forward. I think that you have a very unique position. I'm mm. um, considering this journey and even just the journey from this year yeah. that, I'm, that I'm most aware of Yeah, using that platform. Oh my gosh. I can't yeah. even imagine what's coming next for oh, you. Man. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, we just gonna pray for some great, bigger, greater things and, you know, pray for me in the competition to keep trying to say, cause they try to get me out. I'm like, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I'm in uh, to win it. <laughs> be, that's okay. Just make sure you keep pulling out that brush. I know. <laughs> look that'll give you that look listen i no, i am learning just like you said being prepared and being prepared does not mean being scripted yeah but it means actually having what you need for people to understand your position and what you can deliver yes exactly oh that's a great way you put it yep yeah so it's um i I mean you're teaching us lessons even tonight to where yeah, it's like be be ready. Like at any point, something can happen. So. Any point, something can happen. I was walking down the sh- preparedness. I want to leave. I want to tell y'all this: how I got my show on Magic Mornings and Rhythm Late Night, um, which I had in the past. I was walking down Hollywood Boulevard and with a girlfriend. Somehow we parked somewhere a little further. I she was ready to go. I'm like, let's go to one more place before we got out. Two gentlemen walked out. Um, oh, okay. Hey, you know, what do you guys do? Oh, okay. Well, we're just trying to, oh, okay, what do you guys do? Well, I do music and I'm a journalist. Oh, okay, you have stuff or you you have anything like that? And I'm like, yeah, I do. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I have a friend that's starting a studio and you know, he's looking for some talent. I didn't even know that it was that as big as it was. Like they're one of the biggest networks in Africa. So I didn't even know that. But because I had a reel already, I had just did the reel. I just moved out here. Um I shot the reel out here. I just went out there three months before. I was actually getting ready to leave. But he's like, oh yeah, send me the stuff. And I sent him the stuff. He's like, oh, okay, my, the the owner's in town from uh, London this week. Can you come audition? So I went over there. There was a bunch of other people auditioning. Oh my God. They looked at my reel. That, they started managing me, got the job one year to the day. They told me it was going to take 10 years to get a check in LA. It took me a year to that day, 10% of the time to get a check for hosting in Los Angeles, California. They're like, you ain't about to get on. You got to go. I'm like, no, I'm about to get on. So be ready. Pray, be ready. I'm telling you. Oh my, and my it was on show. From saying, real. and because you also like went to one more store. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> one more, yeah. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Random, exactly. Yeah. Just, she's like, no, let's go. I'm like, no, no, let's go. One more shop, one more shop. And here, bam, life changed. She actually ended up, moving back home and didn't pursue her LA dreams anymore. And, um, which is okay, you know, cause it's, it's yeah. a struggle to stay motivated out here. Yeah. Um, but no, that was that. Yeah. That was my beginning wow. in Los Angeles, California. Wow. Now th- th- there's so, so, so many more layers to you and on your website, individuals can find out more of who you are, but also keep in touch to understand what's coming up. Yeah. Um, so make sure you go and follow and um, sign up and, and stay in tune. And it is. Yes, it is at host underscore Amarachi. Go on there and Amarachi is A-M-A-R-A-C-H-I host like a host underscore Amarachi. And yeah, just keep up with me on there. And like she said, you can find all my links on there and you know, click through if you feel like it, but I got a good, <laughs> I'm sharing with the women this year, 2021. That's what it's about. Women empowerment, confidence, and being prepared. And yeah. Miss Nikki just gave me that slogan, that motto for this year. So thank you. No, you, you are so prepared. Well. You just pulled that out. I didn't know how prepared I've been. I've just always. Consistent, consistent exactly. in your story. Yeah. 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 So we, we usually, we're wrapping up now okay. and um, the time, all, it, as you know, it goes by so fast. Yeah, I, and I always ask the guest um, if they can give us like a, a nugget. Um, I, I was going to use a word that you will share to help people in the nick of time. Okay. But, we've got, but we've got prepared. So I'm going to go with just a real brief statement 
of empowerment to the women, what, what would you tell them to be encouraged and inspired in the nick of time? Be optimistic, be prayerful, and be, have a clean heart. Awesome. Those three things right there, that'll get you somewhere. Awesome. Yeah. Amarachi, I am just delighted to have had this stolen moment with you. <laughs> yes. I'm you so are a jewel. Oh, thank you. And my first name is Ruby and it, and my middle name is Amarachi, which means uh, grace of God and my last name, Odema, it is well. So by the grace of God, it is well. <laughs> oh, that was the name of my conference last year oh! or the year before. It is well. Yeah. It is well. It is. Yeah, and, and it will be. <laughs> oh, yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank well, you so thank much you. for having me, Nikki, and sharing this conversation, this moment with me. I really appreciate it. Yes, I appreciate you so much. Looking forward to following the journey. I will be tuned in on Sunday yes. for Thick House Thick to see house. what happens. <laughs> I cannot wait. And I want to say thank you to all of the listeners in your respective places. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment of Conversations in the Nick of Time. I am your host. Absolutely delighted that you would give us your head and your 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 heart and now we've given you some tools to put into your hand to go and be successful as you define it not as the world and realize that you have everything already you need to be successful just tap into it go and be blessed again thank you sparkman pathway to careers kstl 690 and covenant exchange until next time be blessed